Welcome to Coffee and Tools this week. Well, today. I just put a video out like yesterday. Um, this is another problem that uh, I'm trying to solve. The um, filament, if you run 3D printing, you run into this. The filament on here on the 3D, on the CR10 today, uh, has gotten really brittle. And it's the moisture is just absolutely killing it. It's it's actually just breaking. It's like uh, like glass. It just just snaps and you know powderizes kind of thing. So I went out to some yard sales and looked for a, a food dryer because I heard you can put these things in a food dryer, suck the moisture out of them. They're like new. Stick them back on a machine. And, you know, have at it again. Sound like a great concept. When I started looking around, I uh, realized that with a food dryer. I have no idea what I'm looking for and so what I ended up doing was buying the first food dryer I sh that I ran up into. It was only a couple dollars and I bought it. Well, it was a disaster and right now in the shop I'm experimenting with two different food dryers. So let's go have a look and see what's going on, shall we? So bang, we're, out, we're over here at the workbench and this is the food dryer I found at a yard sale and you can, you'd have to, you sort of had to move things around a little bit, but you could get this in there. Here's the problem, and again, because I didn't know what to do or what I was shopping for other than a food dryer to dry these things, I bought this one for a few dollars. I think I paid, oh, probably not more than about five dollars or something for it. I didn't pay a lot, but you can find them at yard sales, and people don't want them because, uh, you know, the food drying thing, I guess, was a fad and it kind of ended. But anyway, this is the unit, and you can see right here, there's nothing on it. All you do is plug it in, and it has a little heater in the bottom of it, and it just sort of, the heat just rises with venting on the bottom, which rises up through, which dries your food, or in this case, uh, would dry this. And I'll show you the results of that. Are you ready? Uh, yes, you're ready. Sure you are. Okay, this one here. Uh, if you ever watch uh, Angus over there at, uh, at Maker's Muse, <laughs> I think uh, he makes wheels out of these things or something, but this looks like one of his concoctions. You see the, I'm rotating it, and you can see the kind of, uh, you know, yeah, it's kind of wobbly. So what happened was the food dryer got hotter and hotter and hotter. After about 15 minutes, uh, this really nice, you know, warped, almost cowboy hat looking thing showed up. So I was like, oh, not good. So I realized I bought the wrong food dryer, and it was so hot, okay, that I'll show you this one. Uh, this one here is the one I, I sort of need to dry today, but uh, this one was so hot at the time that when I put it on the 3D printer, it would actually un unroll a little bit, and then it would just stop because it was actually uh, sticking to itself, and it, it's still a little st stuck to itself. And again, that was trying to that was trying 15 minutes in, you know, plug and go uh, food dryer. So, if you're going to get a food dryer and, and take the moisture out of this stuff for the filament, I think the number one thing you got to find is uh, some kind of temperature control or a way to deal with it. And uh, so today, I found this little guy for a couple again, a couple dollars yard sale food dryer. Nobody wants it, and I'm there with a 3D printer going me me me. I need it. I want it, you know, or it'll if it'll save my plastic, I'm loving it, you know. So this plastic, this one here is pretty pretty buggered up, but uh, we're gonna food dry it a little bit anyways. But here's the thing. They both cost about the same price. But if you don't know what you're looking for in a food dryer, then you know, chances are you might run across one of these and buy it. And I'm trying to avoid that. Don't buy that for this. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Heck, you might even, uh, well, hopefully you don't burn the house down, but you will lose some plastic over, you know, the, that. Now this one here, which is a little different model again, uh, maybe we'll just turn you a little bit, this one here, yeah. Now this one, yeah, this one here is a, a bigger, better model. It has a built-in, from what I can tell, it has different levels. It has uh, some features such as uh, timer so you can set it to do run for a minute 15 minutes half a half hour whatever it takes and We'll get back to that now temperature wise. I'm still in a little bit of trouble here. It's not bad 
but I'm still in trouble. The lowest temperature I could get on this monkey was 190 degrees, which is, you know, what, not that warm? But when you're drawing this stuff out here, you can be, I guess you can be pretty gentle with it. You don't have to have, you know, you don't have to bake it at 350. That will, <laughs> that will not work. <laughs> but you want a low, a low temperature. And really what you're doing is you're trying to get the moisture. You're not really, uh, temperature you're not after, you're after moisture. So because that's the way these things operate though, was a heat fan to, to create this dry, you know, suck the moisture away from things. Uh, the principle is a good idea, but this is the lowest setting, but this thing has features so I can like, I can set the temperature, the timer, uh, I can set power level, I can have it ding when it wants to, you know, finish the job kind of thing. And the other thing is I can put this in here and get it set up and preset it for 10 or 15 minutes and let it run and get this thing, get this underway while I set my 3D printer up for my uh, my next print. So that's a really, really huge leap in technology difference between this one and this one. The other odd thing that I didn't look for, but I realized with this one, I had it. Let's see if I can pick it up. Yeah, you've got a ton of space in here. I mean, look at this thing. You could probably do two or three uh, spools at the same time because you've got the space. Look at, yeah, I could get another spool in there now. The problem with this one is the heat comes from the top. And so I'd rather have the spool as low as you can. So I took the, uh, the metal racking, I took the metal racking and stuff out of there because I want the spool down towards the bottom of the dish away from this heating element because the heating element, in this case, this particular one uses like a, it's like a, uh, like a light bulb filament that, that, that's glowing heat, like a, a hydrogen that's like, that's putting out stinking blasting heat so you don't want that coming out of here hitting the top of that or you'll probably get another one of these uh like i said over at maker's muse be like one of these you know one of his wheels or something that he's uh, working on to uh, see if it goes round or something <laughs> this probably still goes around too <laughs> but uh i checked with a couple of 3d print people out there i couldn't find anybody that had really uh covered the course on 3d printing now there are some expensive machines out there, you know, and you can spend a lot of money and get a really nice professional dryer for your element. And you can recycle. There's all kinds of really cool gadgets out there for 3D printing, but Mr. Cheap here, you know me, I'm not going to spend any more money than I have to. And I thought if I can get a food dryer to do the trick, hey, we'll go with it. So anyways, this one here, what we can do is, okay, I put it in and I can uh, start it up. So I can turn the power on, I can set my level, and I'm gonna set it level one because uh, I want it as low as possible. Then, uh, timer-wise, we'll, uh, we'll set it at one minute, no biggie. And then, temperature-wise, I'm gonna dial it down as low as it'll go, 190, and then I'll start it up. And there it goes. And it's got a fan running now, and also that light is you know, throwing heat down there to help pull moisture away from whatever it is. In this case, it's my 3D, my 3D filament, my PL, PLA plus, <laughs> yeah. good stuff. We like the 3D uh, machine for so many different uses, but it sits up sometimes. And you see how that got too hot, so it kicked off immediately. So this is just gently warm, but it's not using as much power as that silly thing. And of course, uh, I'm not gonna be seeing, uh, I'm not gonna see that. <laughs> I'm not gonna get the, the warp thing going. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to show this to you guys today because uh, when I first stepped out on the street and went yard sale hopping and thought, oh, I'll just pick up a food dryer, it didn't dawn on me that you really, see, and that's one minute, it's already finished the job and I can just uh, shut it off. And it didn't dawn on me that what to look for and you sort of need some features, especially that temperature control. And of course the timer here is really handy because it beeps and it goes off and tells me that it's uh, dried my plastic for me or whatever. Well, it hasn't. I mean, we just did a one minute job. But this one here, uh, just straight plugged in, I found uh, right around 15 minutes was the, uh, the crucial point. After 15 minutes, if it was any longer in the machine, uh, this sort of thing would start up and of course the plastic would start to stick to itself. It was virtually uh, annealing the plastic on the coil so it wouldn't feed, you know, for the uh, machine. So really bad, really bad thing. 
you want that plastic to uncoil smoothly and run down, of course, to your extruder and you know do your 3D print. So at Coffee and Tools today, I want to thank everybody again for subscribing and watching and what have you. But uh, this is something that uh, I think some of the 3D guy and gang out there that are big on 3D printers, I think they should have covered this really well somehow. And I, like I said, I looked around and maybe somebody's got one out there I haven't seen. But some of the more respected sites that I'm really into with 3D printing that I check in on all the time, that includes you, Joel. And, you know, what happened? You know, uh, for some reason, they didn't, you know, they didn't say, well, look for a specific model or make or, or something like that, which I'm not going to do that here. I will give this information. This one is called Flavor Wave Deluxe uh, Oven, and it's by uh, Thane Housewares. Housewares, that's an interesting word. Yeah. But it's by Thane Housewares. This is an old unit. And again, I paid I paid less than $5 because I also got a coffee mug and a few other things at the yard sale while I was there, thrown into the deal, as they say. But for about $5 or whatever, get yourself a food dryer if you have a 3D printer so you can dry your plastic. But know what to look for. If it doesn't have, you know, the controls package of some sort, and I've seen some beautiful ones out there with digital control and everything that uh, I missed the deal on, but uh, you know, if you see something like that, that's the sort of thing you want. The other thing to look for is, of course, the, the tub size. And I'll show you what's wrong with this one. Well, this was another, uh, you know, see this got so hot that even the glue to the label actually started to uh, let go. Interesting. This was where the problem ran into. This looks like a nice big uh, dryer. And then you unload the top, and you see you have all these, uh, I call them shelves. So you, you can't, obviously your filament's not gonna fit in between these things. So you start offloading all this, and you keep offloading it. Until you get to the very last one. And then you have this great big dish. And I'll show you what's in the bottom of this guy. See, there's the vent, and then you have a great big heating coil. This is what you don't want, you know. Uh, technically, if I was going to build a 3D printer dryer, I would probably just use a light bulb because that's you don't need that kind of power to create dry air. Uh, well, we used to keep our uh, welding rods dry. We used to take an old refrigerator, put a light bulb in it, close the door, and that was your dryer, and it would work, you know. And 3D printing, you could probably do something similar if somebody came out with one that's like almost static like that. Just a light bulb, uh, insulated box, you close the door and it'll just keep everything dry. In fact, you could stack all your uh, 3D coils in there, all your, your filaments, and uh, you could keep them dry. And then they would be ready for whenever you want to use them. And when you're done printing, take it off, put it back in the dryer, and leave it in there or something for storage. And just put a small, low wattage, 15 watt maybe. Uh, if it's an LED bulb, you might be able to get away with something even lower than that. Uh, I don't even know if you need to vent that or not, because uh, I know that the old refrigerators, when we used the uh, use them for uh, welding rods, we didn't even vent those things. We used to just look for an old fridge that was broken, worthless. As long as the light bulb, you know, we could put a light bulb in there and hang it in the top. We put all the uh, welding rods in the bottom. It would keep the welding rod and the moisture away from the welding rod, so you always had fresh rod to use whenever you're ready to, you know, do welding. And no, I'm not a welder, but uh, because I was involved in uh, the mechanics of industrial repairs and uh, maintenance and what have you, you have to learn everything. Welding, cutting torches, uh, all the millwright work, the pipe fitting work, hydraulics, electrical, of course, was my specialization and I had my licensing for it. But also you learned electronics, you learned instrumentation. I don't need to get on, uh, I don't need to tell you all about that. But anyways, this is... So the first problem you've got right here is you can only put one tray in here, put this on top, and then you virtually, you can't even close the lid because there isn't enough space in there for, for that. Now I was thinking about modifying it, but again, fellas, what's the point, you know? So this, uh, in fact, this uh, dryer is going to be donated uh, to a local store that uh, raises money for uh, abused and battered wives and husbands. <laughs> there, there is such a thing. Yeah. Uh, I used to be. <laughs> anyway, that, that's, 
probably where that'll go. It'll just be a donation or something because it was only a few dollars and it was well worth the uh, experiment. And look at the learning curve. I found out I need I need something with some features with you know with controls that will allow me to set the timer, the timer, the the temperature, and you know this will use a lot less energy and it'll, so it'll save a little bit of money on energy and at the same time it'll get the job done. It'll dry the, uh, it'll dry it. Now this only been in there a few minutes. Actually it's only been in there one minute. And I can take it out and I can feel this. This is already, yeah, it's getting kind of warm. But, like I said, you couldn't even bend this stuff a minute ago and it's only been in the dryer a minute. And yeah, I can already feel the flexibility is coming back into the plastic again because the I'm getting some of that moisture out so she's already Yep, I can bend her. I might even be able to see if I can break it. Wow, it's even tough. Yep, already, wow. When I brought this out here, every time I even oof, tried to bend a piece, it was it was just so brittle, it was snapping like glass, and it's already starting to come back to uh, you know be usable. So it doesn't take much to get the moisture out of this stuff. Look at that, I can tie a knot. Wow. This stuff was like glass a uh, half hour ago, less than a half hour ago. So that is, that is amazing. If you're not into 3D printing, you have no idea what us 3D printer guys are talking about. But, the, but people that are into 3D, they know exactly what I'm talking about with this stuff. And, you know, when you have $30 or something tied up in a spool, you don't want to be throwing those spools away. So apparently this is the, this is the cheapest way to do it. You like that? The cheapest way to do it. Yep, and uh, this particular model, like I said, I, I gave you the information. It doesn't have a model number or anything on it that I can see. I, I would give you that information too to try to look for one. But I've seen digital and everything else. If you can find one that's of this design, you want this. Stay away from that. Don't even think about it. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Like always, please like, share, subscribe, and crazy more content. Oh. Giveaways. Oh. oh, after next week, we're going to do some major giveaway stuff. And the first item I'm going to uh, release once I find it is something that you can't buy. It's cl very collectible. I don't even know what the value is, but you might be able to take it down to that Pawn Stars. Uh, where is it in uh, Nevada? And yeah, over to uh, Las Vegas, I think it is and uh, take it into the Pawn Stars and see how much money they'll give you for it. <laughs> yeah, it's that, it's that kind of an item. But I just want to give it away to somebody else. I don't want to, I have kept it for a while, but it was like, I don't really need it. In fact, I, the reason I bought it was not for why I have it, and I need to shut up. Until next time. Uh, man, it's warm in Texas today. All right, over and out.